Morning, everybody. Morning. 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 I'll give a short and sharp. We've got uh, quite a bit to get through today, and everyone's here for a different reason. And so we make sure that all those reasons are covered off to everyone's satisfaction. <laughs> okay, so um, first of all, quick thanks to uh, Brian and Tanisha who are in over the weekend to set this up. We will be videoing part of this towards the end, particularly for the business awards, because obviously we can't fit 180 odd people into this room. We could try, but it wouldn't work. Um, so I've got a couple of different things. Before I start, quick uh, acknowledge, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Rotary people, who, uh, who we respect them as they are our traditional customers and we pay our respects for their leaders, past, present and emerging. Now, we've got lots of things going on here. It's just myself, I'm the Robinson General Manager. I think pretty much everyone here, a couple of faces I don't know. You'll know who you are, because I know who you are. Um, <laughs> There you go. So I will introduce uh, my team who are here. We've got, so this is going to be this is an exciting thing. I'm going to announce that you're going to go up here. And that uh, everybody knows what I'm going to uh, So Tanisha Smith, please help set it up over here. We've got Reed, who's. Oh, you um, and I also, I have to do it. I mean, we've got to spend the whole Easter thinking of this exact moment. The first thing I do comes to you that morning. Um, get the youth man college hall. <laughs> stand up. This is not a <laughs> And I promise this will go on for the next two or three days. <laughs> over and over and over again. No, Tripkin, congratulations. Thank you. On behalf of all of us. Um, we've got some of our um, Business Connect board members with us today. We've got Travis, Sam, Rebecca. We've also got our uh, Hello. Chair. Yeah. And more royalties have arrived. <laughs> oh, my favorite. Okay, sit in the front, ready for you. Oh, um, <laughs> good morning, chicken. <laughs> got some people from the council. We've got oh, Daniel Tyler there as well. Good morning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, and, and quick to pick up on it. Like that. Sorry. Of course, yes, anybody about this is a sponsor. I know if you'll be here for that. We've got some big news about that coming up in the second half. Luke from the council. Hi. Who else have I got here? We've got, yes. Hi, Sue. How are you? One of the sponsors as well. One of the sponsors as well. One of, one of the, yeah, in oh, so many months. Um, we've got Glenn. No, 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 it's not here before. Right, I'm not here. We'll get on to the bits he came for. I'll like continue and talk all day. That's the one. I think that's it. We've got three different speakers today. And so, without further ado, I'm actually going to bring up Hayden from the Department of Education. Yeah, it's all yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi everyone, um, so my name is Katie Friedlieb, I work for the Department of Education. Within that, Training Services New South Wales. Within that, a team called Regional Industry Education Partnerships. Um, we are really four months into this role, so it's quite odd, but we call ourselves Reapers, uh, just because it's for short, it's a bit easier. What all that means is that my job is to connect industry with schools. So there's 26 people that do my role across New South Wales, and we all have our different regions. I work all the way um, along the Murray, so Albury all the way to Kumiala, which is the New South Wales side of uh, Mugdura. So the idea is that um, we promote career pathways for students in the industries that um, are needed locally. So we look at the economic development strategies in each of our regions and try and understand what are going to be the growth areas and what businesses are going to need uh, more of the school leader cohort in the near future. So locally, that is probably going to be quite obvious to everyone, agriculture, health, 
trades, manufacturing, and a little bit of hospitality and tourism there. So that's kind of the areas that my limited funding can go to and my like work can go to, um, but I can also work on just anything. If there's a business that has a certain concept or there's a school or a student that's, you know, really interested in this area, um, it's definitely not confined to those type of industries as well. We can be really creative and innovative which, with this, which is what makes my job really good. So I would also just like to acknowledge country, obviously on Wiradjuri land now. Um, I traveled from Yak this morning, which is yet the same country too. So this program has been going for a couple of years and here's some of the stats around why um, it started and why it's still going. So um, all the reporting in different countries shows that students that get help with their career pathways and learn about getting to navigate the world of work are more successful later on. And you may have heard the statistic that students nowadays are unlikely to, you know, do their training, get a job, work in that industry for 40 years. Obviously, it's more common now to swap jobs, but um, like from different businesses, but it's even more common to career change. So we expect that students are going to do this in the future. So in through teaching them in high school, okay, here's how you look at a, uh, an industry and research it, and here's how you look at training opportunities, and here's how you network with businesses. That's helpful for their first job, but it's useful to teach them those skills so that they can apply them in 10 years' time if they switch roles as well. So you're kind of helping them do the thing at the time, but also teaching them those skills so that they can reapply them later on. So... The other thing is that I can sit in the middle of a business and a school and be able to understand both sides. Um, so instead of the career advisor, which is my main contact at all the schools, fielding a hundred different calls from a hundred different local businesses about we have this job or we want to do this thing, that's going to get quite overwhelming. If I can kind of sit in between and funnel that through and say, okay, there's 20 different businesses in the construction space that want some school engagement, Let's organize an activity, um, for example, the Try a Trade Day that's coming up in May, um, where 200 local students will come together and get to um, like engage with heaps of local businesses on that industry. So it's just a little bit more efficient um, and everyone really gets a lot more out of it. The other thing that like is a major barrier, which may seem quite small, but it's where all of my funding goes, is transport. Like getting buses for schools to go from, say, like Colcan into town, that's very expensive and just logistically hard to organize as well. So you can't be asking a school to pop in every um, day for something. Like it needs to be quite structured and organized to make sure that they have enough casual teachers to um, cover their classes. There's like all these little things. Um, that make it a little bit trickier than, yeah, let's just get this student in to do this program. It'll be awesome for them. Um, and then also, obviously, from the business side, I can understand that everyone's so short-staffed. Straight up, my job is not going to be, oh, you need someone tomorrow, I can help you do that. It's medium and long-term outcomes. If there's a short-term outcome, that's great. But we might be promoting help for year 10 students. And then they decide, yep, I'm going to do health at uni. And then they go away for three years. And then after that, they're a graduate and in the community, they're looking for a role. So it's a little bit different than just like you want jobs now, we want to fill those spots now. It's really that long-term and strategic thinking. Um, and how do we make sure that there is that industry later on? Because I know it's something easier to kind of kick down the road. I'll deal with that later. But if we don't do it now, then it's going to be an even bigger issue moving forward as well. So this is some of the uh, examples of activities that we um, help manage. So it can be as, you know, kind of smaller as getting a, a local business representative into a school to do a 20 minute presentation, which is awesome. Um, or it can be work experience and organizing a really great personalized work experience program for students. Um, I'll show you some examples of different programs we use as well. But obviously what's great is that we can get students into school-based apprenticeships and traineeships, that's what that is. 
um, or employment. Uh, because I work in training services in New South Wales, that's bread and butter, is the um, hands-on training. But we obviously recognise that we still need those um, university degrees for certain things as well. So it's really focused on what is going to be best for the student and the business, rather than here's a role, we're going to push you into it. Um, it's really personalising the programs. So what my team really um, works on is there's 26 of us across New South Wales. We all do our own thing, but a lot of the programs get picked up and copied and moved around. So we're not going to try and recreate the wheel. If something works in another region, then we'll see if that's relevant to here um, and we'll reapply it. So for example, you've got Girls Can Too, which is a program that will run in term two locally. Uh, last year, I think it started in Dubbo a few years ago. Last year, it was Griffith, Wagga, um, and Albury. And it's a really great program to help introduce women into non-traditional trades. So obviously, uh, with the major projects coming up, the Riverina uh, Redevelopment Joint Venture at Bandiana and Kapuka, um, and then also the hospital that will be coming, we're expecting that we're going to need so many more trades. Um, and if we try and include that other 50% of the population a lot more than we probably have um, previously, it's going to be a lot easier to fill those spots. So in this program, 15 year, ten, year 10 to 12 girls, so about three girls from each school, um, will come together one day a week per term and they um, will get to do tray taster days, they get to visit certain sites locally, they get to do work readiness programs and then they have to do a week of work experience. They also get a free um, uniform provided to them, which they love, um, and they really get to bond with each other as well. And so they make those connections for later on. So this has been a really successful program because a lot of them do end up going into SBATs or some of them even continue on with school, but then decide to go into a Bachelor of Construction Management. Um, it's just something they may not have looked at before. And in all of these, there's heaps of opportunities for businesses to be involved. So this one we've um, partnered with Squad. They've organised um, four different industry sites. So that's four different businesses. But then we'll need 15 different um, businesses for the work experience component as well. So that's the good thing about this program. It's not like we're expecting businesses to provide all or nothing. There's a kind of smaller commitment that you can give or a bigger one, depending on how involved you want to be. We also do have a graduation at the end of this. It's the end of June. Um, if anyone's interested, if they just want to get a taster and see what it is, that's a really good opportunity to just come and hear the girls talk about how the program has been and talk about some of their highlights. Also, Ag Industry Day. Um, so this is something that I've teamed up with my colleague in Wagga, who handles the Wagga Group of Fleet in schools. Um, and we've also partnered with Agri Futures. So they're going to help us organize industry speakers. And this program is targeted to year nine and 10 students, because what we're finding is that students aren't even choosing the subjects that they need in year 11 and 12 to go on to agriculture, because earlier on they make that decision that, no, it's not for me. So we're trying to kind of change that perception and just make sure we show them all the different faces of ag and all the options that are there. It's not just sitting in a tractor all day like they might have seen their parents do. So this is a more of like a one day program um, and you'll get like 15 students from each school to come together um, to get to see all the options there. Here's just an example of our 2021 um, achievements. Our opportunities um, are a big thing. Instead of saying like we're really aiming for an apprenticeship out of this or something like that, we measure on opportunities. So if 10 students go out to three different sites um, in a day, like a manufacturing site tour, for example, that's 30 opportunities because um, the 10 students have got the opportunity to meet three different people, three, see three different sites, that type of thing. Um, and we also look at different demographics as well. So I just want to leave you with this. This is the kind of reason we're doing all of this and um, we want to have that impact and our statistics and our reporting shows that we already do this is not just like a fluff piece or a nice to have this is helping those students make decisions and it's helping businesses um, build that pipeline for the future as well 
and obviously understand that younger generation. So there's a lot of benefits that go both ways. It's not just like I'm needing to beg businesses to help me out for this. Um, a lot of them are coming to me and saying, how do I get students involved? How do we run some activities, that type of thing? Um, and then the schools are saying, how do we get involved with this, this business? They seem really exciting. So it's just about facilitating that. So if anyone wants to be involved in school engagement activities, I know you might be here for um, awards, but <laughs> this is, you know, if you're interested in awards, then hopefully you're also interested in school engagement opportunities as well, because um, obviously it's just a nice thing to do. It's great for the um, for your employees as well. Um, often when we do site tours, we go around to, um, and do the tour and meet different people and then they'll get to explain how they got into the job and why they like where they're working and everything. So it's just kind of an opportunity to reflect um, on where you're at currently as well. So, yeah, please come and see me after if you want to talk about uh, school engagement activities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to take a brief moment to get some more chairs out. We've got more people. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. sorry. Anyone wants to email me, they can. Or have a um, We'll send out your email. Thanks. That's not a Yeah. Thank you, Katie. Katie and Sean on the road. Next, we have Sue Gold representing the Board of Trust. I'm a baby. It just says that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I have handouts. Um, and I, I guess a bit of a segue because what I have really understood before now was that the main reason you're all gives the business awards, and I'm talking about grant writing, which often involves having a business case or a strategic plan or a business plan. So a lot of what I'll be talking about actually fits with the whole reason that you're here. So not a complete waste of your time. Hang out <laughs> um, until you get to the meaty bits. But I am Sue Gold. I was very fortunate to be appointed to the Board of Trust Executive Officer role in January this year and was on the board prior to that. We still have um, Clemens Atkins, who's in the room, who's the prior, prior EO, who is now in our community engagement and impact role. So I'm a little bit thrilled because my brain's trust is still in the organisation <laughs> and we're in a process of growing and doing some new things. In my previous life, I was a business consultant. And so much of what I have done for over 20 years now is work with organisations on their um, business case strategic planning, business planning, or the judge for the Melbourne Business Awards have helped people in grant writing and um, tender writing and that sort of thing. So I'm hoping that my little bit of a conversation today is also useful for you when you get to your business awards, though that was not necessarily my intent. Um, we thought of trust. We are a community foundation. It means we're a philanthropic organisation. So we're a conduit between people who have um, a generosity of spirit with either some um, services they can offer, but primarily some funding that they donate through Board of Trust, and we get those funds out into community. And we work across the six shires, so Wodonga, Indigo and Tower in Victoria, and Albury, Greater Hume and Federation in New South Wales. So we've got the six shires, but obviously the greater population is all with Olga, and it's probably where we're slightly better known for the work we do. Uh, but we've also had quite a big role in distribution of bushfire funding through Tower. So there's um, been a lot of activity in that space as well. Um, we survive by the generosity of the community. That's our whole purpose is to connect generous people with 
not-for-profit community-based organisations who are doing good things. Does anyone need to leave the building? <laughs> <laughs> um, one of our really significant programs that we run every year is, is our Get 500 campaign. And I'm going to hand out this some brochures. So please take one, pass them on. Um, Get 500 is one of our campaigns where it's a really, um, we use a grassroots approach. People or a collection of people gift $500. We collect that as a donation. We collect all this funding through until the end of June. At the end of June, we know how much money we have in the pot. And then we call for grants from community. We have a, a grant um, assessment process where applicants for the grants are shortlisted and in November we have what we call the pitch night and at the pitch night the shortlist applicants get to literally pitch their project and everybody that has gifted $500 gets a vote and they vote on who the winner is. No one goes home shorthanded which is great so everyone wins some things but the, um, the I guess the primary winner of the day uh, last year won $19,000 and the runners up um, each received 3000 But the advantage is that they are supported to learn how to pitch their project and they get to um, uh, understand a bit more about their project and potential audiences and needs and collaborators. And then often on the night, people in the audience go, I like your project. I like your project, you didn't win, but I'm going to help. And so people often receive some additional funding or mentoring or other supports to help bring that project to life. So it's quite an exciting program because it's all grassroots. Most people who have some disposable income can be either an individual or a part of a collective and raise $500 to donate. That makes a huge difference for people in the community who don't have anything. And the projects that um, have been successful, and you'll see in the brochure, you know, there's one of the cute dog. So one of the projects are actually funded support animals. We work with youth. We do all sorts of other community projects that often wouldn't find funding readily available to them, which leads into writing a grant. And the um, what's really important for anyone that is going to, um, I guess, pitch any sort of project is that almost always people need funds to do that. People in business need it, community groups need it, people with a project <laughs> idea might find an auspice who will um, you know, be the lead and the recipient of funding and then the conduit for a program to be delivered. But somehow people have to get their ducks in a row and be able to tell their story in a convincing way. And this is true for um, a whole raft of different um, audiences. And it's true regardless of whether you're going for $1,000 or you're going for a million or 10 million. The actual principles are the same and the complexity of the grant can be the same. So, you know, we've written grants for people where large organisations have aspired for a few million dollars over a few years. And that's been easier than a grant for $5,000. And you, you look at the difference and you go, this is just crazy, but that's what the funding body has required. And it can be really, really complex to get small amounts of money. And I think that's one thing when um, people working in small business or in community groups is that they go, I don't want a lot of money. And they go, yeah, it doesn't work that way. It's whoever holds the funds is going to determine how complex your application is. So... The biggest thing is to make sure if you're going to write an application for funding is that you are really well prepared ahead of any funding opportunity becoming available and that you're very clear about what your business is there to achieve. So again, whether you're a for-profit or for-purpose or not-for-profit organisation, in a sense, you are still a business. You still have to have a purpose. You still have to have directions things that you want to achieve, you'll still need funding to do that. 
And so one of the things that's really important is if you see grant money become available, don't get really excited unless it's absolutely in line with your business. Because if you're successful, you'll have to deliver the project, but you may find it's taking you off on a tangent. It's got nothing to do with the work that you want to achieve. And all of a sudden, that is not fun. So know what your business is about. Know what your goals are. And make sure that if you receive funds, that it's going to bring forward your business goals, not take you off on a tangent. Keep in mind that writing a grant, um, it can, it, the, the most complex part is actually all the stuff that you know about your organisation but you never wrote about first. So, you know, one of the things um, that I do when I work with people, when we do, you know, bring along an idea or a project and let's unpack it and we'll spend a full day workshop and we'll go, great, tell me about yourself. And they go, oh, I've been in business for like 10 10 days or I've been in business 10 years and I still can't give you a one sentence statement about my business because no one talks about themselves you know does that resonate mm -hmm. yeah yeah so you're <laughs> some of you at least are going to go for business awards some of you are likely to go for all grant applications unless you can really clearly say this is who I am this is my organization this is what we do this is our purpose this is how I add value into the community this is the expertise of my team, including myself. You have to be able to write a paragraph about how brilliant you are. <laughs> Get over it. You know, most people go, no, I'm not very, and of course you are. If you've been in business and you're running a business, please tell me you've got two good gray cells that are working well. Because most people are really, really smart, but nobody is used to saying what their smarts are. So these are things that I will challenge you to start writing now. If you ever think you're going to go for funding, write a paragraph about your organisation. Yes. Would you suggest that if you actually try writing in the third person, sometimes it can help? Write however you like. And that, yes, that can be a really good approach. Um, you know, what would others say about you? Oh, other people say this. Yeah, so write that down and then start to craft it. Yeah, absolutely. And it, I'll guarantee you, it will be the hardest part of writing any application, whether this is for a grant or for your business awards. Tell, tell the reader how brilliant your organisation is. Why, are you, why do you need to exist? What makes you important? Who are you? Why would I trust you with funds? Because people go, oh, because I'm trustworthy. Yeah, I don't know you. If I'm, a, I'm the holder of the funding, I'm going to give funds to an organisation where I believe that organisation will exist in the next year or two. So there's value out of that money. That the people in that organisation have the skills to use this money well. That these people have proven to me that they can manage a project. Uh, so if I'm sitting there, I don't know who you are. I don't know your organisation. I don't know you. I don't know your team. I've never seen you in action. I may not know your industry and I don't care. I have a job to get money into an organisation that will do good with it. And the only way you convince me is that you've written a paragraph about how good you are. Yeah. <laughs> and it's really scary. So one of the things that I suggest is that you start writing about yourself and you get people that know you to look at that because they'll go, oh, I think you're great. You're good at this. You're good at that. You do this. And you'll go, oh, yeah. And they'll go, write it, get it written. The other thing you need to start doing is collect all your business organ uh, organization documents. So things like um, your, if you're a not-for-profit or for-profit, you'll have an ABN. You'll be registered somewhere. If you're a not-for-profit, you might have an incorporated um, association certificate. Other evidence that you are a legitimate business, that you have an ABN, that you have done tax returns. Please don't go for a grant if you're late in a tax return because you get sorted, you get sourced. You know, people, you'll be checked out. Does your ABN stack up? Have you done your tax returns? You're telling me you're an organization this size and do, does this work, and you'll be tested against your tax returns, and that doesn't stack up. It's really bad. Don't tell me you've got all these staff, but you've never declared them in an official, you know, report 
back to government, whether it's the ACNC or the ATO, because all of that gets checked. That's all basic due diligence. And businesses do get caught out. Um, and not necessarily that it will come back to bite them, but the assessor will look and go, yeah, that doesn't stack up big. You know, and one of the things that we do find is that some of the larger grants in particular, people put in an application and they're not eligible. So in some of the multi-million dollar government grants, up to 40, 45% of applicants are not actually eligible for the grant that they've gone to. But they have spent weeks and many, many days of their human resources writing that application. So that's the next thing you do. After you've written how brilliant you are, or you've got all your business documents, you're finding a grant, make sure you are eligible. And don't think you can fluff it. And don't think that the assessor will notice that you're not. So be really clear. And that will come back to buy organisations often that are um, on council land or on DELF land or DEFA land. Um, there's a lot of caveats where government won't fund an organisation that might be a school or a sporting club that operates on another the government department land, even though that government won't fund you either. It's a real catch. But if you're a business, then you're pretty safe. You're not likely to be in any way operating on government land unless you're a rent payer, and that's fine. Um, the other thing you want to do is be really clear about your project. So when you tell your business story, why is it that you can do this project? What that project is going to achieve? Be very clear that it fits the local regional strategies. So does it align with your council strategy? Is it got something to do with the region that you live in? Does it have something to do with state or national strategy? Because more often than not, a lot of your grants will come from organisations that are there to deliver on their purpose. So if I'm a government organisation, my purpose is to achieve X, Y, Z in a particular region, your project needs to deliver X, Y, Z. So you need to know the link between what you're trying to do, which might be to, you know, save pretty bunnies at Easter, and the government's agenda, which is to get all pretty bunnies into cages and not in the bush. And so you have to say, I'm not saving pretty bunnies. You're saying, I'm saving pretty bunnies by getting them into a cage and out of the bush. And the government goes, oh, you're making my agenda easy. You're delivering what I need. Thank you very much. As opposed to, you think it's a great idea and you go, yeah, it's really needed in the community. But the funding body goes, yeah, but it's not what I need to do. You have to now write your project aligned with what the funding body wants. And that can also help you. That can also, I can talk forever and never look at that, you'll notice. Um, so that becomes really, really important. But if you can align your project to a local target of any sort, so whether, and it's the target that that funding body has, then you are going to get extra marks than if you've got this great, great project that you think really matters and the funding body couldn't care less about. It means you also have to be able to describe your project according to the words that the recipient um, assessor wants to use. So if they say purple, please don't say no. You know, like it is that simple. If their word is purple, then use the word purple, even if you don't like it. Does that make sense? It's really it's the pedantic stuff like that, which will actually get you through um, a lot of hoops into any application. Um, the other thing to do is to think about your networks. If you've got lots, if you can join together and have two or three organisations delivering a slightly larger project, that will often get you more ticks than a small organisation trying to do something on their own because there's great confidence that you'll have the human resources, that you'll have the time, and potentially that you'll have funds within your organisation as well. And so keep in mind that um, once you get the money, you have to deliver. And so make sure that your budget is accurate. Don't go, I'll go a bit cheaper, because if I'm a bit cheaper, I might get in. No. If you're like me and you look at somebody's budget, you go, yeah, well, that's not real. You're out. You know, I, I'm not going to waste my time figuring out what's wrong. I'm going to go, that project cannot be delivered for that amount of money. So you're off the table because I've got a hundred other applications to look at. 
So keep in mind that assessors are not stupid. They know projects, they know what it costs, they know what resources you may or may not have. If you're a two-person organization, you cannot deliver a project that requires five people unless you've got a budget within your application to fund five people. Yeah. So again, make sure that you, you think through what CSS are going to be really critical about and get that part. The other part around your application is getting your pitch right. And this will apply equally for your business award. So if you are going to go for a business award, if you're wanting to pitch an idea to an audience that may become supporters, or you're pitching your idea in writing to um, an app, you know, as part of an app event, you have to make sure that the audience understands why your project is so brilliant and what it will achieve. So setting the scene, the situation, the need, why it matters, you have to remember that your um, assessor of your application knows nothing about you. Again, your industry, <laughs> your geography. Make sure it's very plain English and it is absolutely correct. So join the dots um, and be able to write this in a few hundred words. So that's the other part that trips people up is that you might write your project and you could write an essay and it's six pages long and you think it's brilliant and then you're allowed to write 250 words. You have to tell them 250 <coughs> words, your content, the situation you're in, the problem and why your project's great. And people can't, you know, that just... They can't do it. And a lot of online applications will cut off. Your first 250 words, if that's the limit, is what will get in, and then the rest is lost. That says never sees it. So really practice when you're preparing for any sort of application to write really succinctly. And I keep going back to people, keep asking yourself, what's the point? What's the point? <laughs> what's the point of you know, this? paragraph that I'm writing. What's the one thing? If I can only tell them one thing, what would I tell them? Make sure that's your top sentence. So if you're saying in an application, um, uh, you know, proving that you've done great project management before so they can trust you with the money to do another one, your first statement is, we're experienced project managers. Second statement is, we have delivered multiple projects over X years to achieve this outcome. Here's my proof. Then the next one is, so you can trust me with your money because I will do it again. You know, so making it really obvious, tell people exactly what you want them to know, and then make a statement around the evidence of that as well. And you can't be shy. Yeah, no shy. Um, so get that problem right. Get the solution. What is it? How is your project a solution? And it's the same way when you do a business plan, how is your business a solution to something? Because no business will succeed if you don't have a product or a service to sell that somebody wants at the price that will make it profitable. And it's the same for a grant application. What is it that you're selling? What's your solution? Can you prove that somebody needs that? And do you convince the assessor that you're, you can be trusted and you're worthy of receiving the funds? So you have a different mindset, but it's the same strategy as any business plan that you write as well. Um, look at what you can leverage and look at what, again, partnerships you've got. Look at who the beneficiaries are. Do they actually care? Do they want this? So you know the statement, you know, nothing about us without us. Make sure if you're going to do something unto someone, which because you think they need saving, but you've actually gone to speak to people and they say, yes, we want this. You're now working with us. And a lot of applications come in with a real attitude of we're saving somebody and that's beyond annoying. So don't do it. Make sure that people that are going to be the recipients of your project have actually been part of just saying, yes, we do need this. Yes, this would be a benefit to us. Yes, if you are successful, we will help work with, work with you, co-design that project so that you're um, able to deliver something that is actually meaningful and will be um, deliverable as well.
The other thing is preparing to, to pitch. So getting all your resources right, getting your outcomes and your benefits really clear, single statements and be able to prove it. Be really clear about your ask. So sometimes, um, depending on whether you're pitching in writing or verbally, do you want money? Do you want people to do something for you? Do you want them to introduce you to someone? Keep in mind that it's all very well for you to tell me what you're doing, but what are you, why are you wasting my time telling me about it? What do you need of me? Be very clear up front. If you want money, say you want money, say how much you want. Don't be shy about asking um, and don't be cagey about it. Don't go, oh, I think I need some money. I'm not sure how much. I'm really nervous to pay $5,000. If I get it out there, $5,000, great. How can I help you get that? No, it's, it's quite annoying to have people know that people want money, but they're not being prepared to talk about it, but they'll talk about everything else. So it's a real, I think it's the second thing from writing about how good you are. The other thing that's really bad and hard to say is how much money you want at the end of the day. So be really clear about it. Have your plans, have your budget, then go back and check that everything you've said does align with you said, this was a problem, this is what I'm going to do, this is what I will achieve, and make sure it all stacks up. A few take-homes, and I'm done. Thank you very much. That's very good. You should get into this business. Did you? Right. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, for the problem. Um, last but not least, I'm going to bring Rhea up to talk about business awards and all the things going on in that space. No pressure. Yeah. None at all. I'm right here. Why everyone was here this morning, so um yeah. The 2023 calls for Alfred Honor Business Awards, um, as we all know, are underway at the moment. Um, after putting everything on pause last year to rebuild the awards, um, we had our Celebrate Business event at the end of last year to relaunch everything and kind of give the community an idea of timelines, what we're doing, what to expect, and all those sorts of things. So we opened applications a few weeks ago now for the 12 different categories across a variety of industries and an employer of choice. Um, so interestingly, um, both what Peggy and Sue have spoken about um, this morning tied really well into um, what an awards entry could look like. Um, so certainly from an employer of choice point of view, if that's something that you were considering going for, um, reaching out to Katie or a program like Katie's would be a really great thing to include in a category like that because it shows um, taking that extra step to connect with the community and find employment solutions and those sorts of things. Um, and certainly from the tips that students giving just now about grant writing and being able to talk about your business and saying, you know, why you're good at what you do and why you deserve either a grant or to win an award is I think a skill that we can all work on. Um, I know certainly I struggle to talk about um, myself or my business, or even sometimes when I'm out talking to potential members and sponsors for ABC, um, people say, what's the great about ABC? And you kind of get that moment like, oh, I don't want to talk myself up, but you need to be able to do that. And it's a really great skill to practice. And um, whether it's an awards application or a grant application, those are great ways to practice those skills and just continually improve. So I think, from here, a lot of the feedback that we've had about the award so far is that it's just too damn complicated. Um, and we have listened to that. Um, and I think we, um, when we stopped everything last year to bring it all back and kind of raise that, we brought in some um, outside help to pull everything apart and put it back together. So from there, we launched with the current Awards Force platform, which has been a great addition to the system compared to what we've done previously, and launched with a new application and entry process and all of the different categories. Um, the feedback that we've had so far from quite a few people is that it's just too complicated and it doesn't make sense, and we need to pare it back in order to make it 
something that people actually want to enter and will feel like they get value out of because at the end of the day, um, winning an award is great, but it's also about the process of looking at your business, reflecting on your business, what have you achieved, um, what can you do better, and just give you a chance to celebrate where you've actually come with your business, with your team, or if you're a sole trader, kind of give yourself that moment to pat yourself on the back and um, recognize that it's a tough slog and you're doing it and you're doing it well. So we made the decision very late last week to pause award entries for a brief period while we pull back all of the questions and make them a lot simpler. I know some of the feedback we got was uh, that there were three questions in one for one of the for a couple of the questions, well, a lot of the questions. So we stripped all that back. We are going to be relaunching um, this week with those paired back questions. Um, the video component, I know, has been a bit of a, a sticky point for quite a few people. So we're going to be making the video component optional. Um, so either you can do a video or um, upload just a photo that really captures the essence of your business, whatever you feel is easier for you to manage, because we know everyone's busy, everyone's short staffed, everyone needs to be able to feel like they can actually get an entry into the best of its ability, basically. So if you've already started your entry, which I know quite a few people have, we do have almost 100 entries already in the award course platform, which is fantastic. If you have already started your entry, um, you will not need to start from scratch. You can pull out the best bits of what you've already started and use that to, to rebuild and to um, answer what we hope is much uh, easier and friendlier way to get your entry in for the awards. So on that, um, timelines are pretty much the same as what we've been advertising to this point. So finals will be announced um, in early June. Uh, then after that, if you are a finalist, you will go into the second round of judging where judges will organize either a, a, a on-site or face-to-face -face interview just to dig into your uh, entry a little bit more. So that's a great time um, for you to really back up what you're saying and, and offer those extra bits of information and proof points about why you are deserving of whichever award you have entered. Uh, and we're going to have a night to celebrate um, finalists at closer towards the uh, gala on the 11th of August, which is all booked in for the uh, entertainment center on Friday, the 11th of August. So it is a busy time for us. And we just wanted to make sure we took the time to acknowledge and thank everyone who has given feedback so far. It is not go unheard. And our mission is to deliver the best awards that we can because we know it's such a great thing for our community. And we want to you know, support and encourage everyone in that space. So I will open it up to some questions. Please, nothing curly. I'm not a morning person. I haven't had breakfast yet. Yeah. So be nice. <laughs> Moral support. Yeah. Um, does any, honestly, anyone have any questions or anything you'd like to add? No. Yeah, first of all, I will actually just say that we, we spent a fair bit of time in last week with the team. We may said that they've been working through the week, but they actually actually have worked all through the rest of the camp. Um, to ensure that uh, these alterations and effect timelines so that um, everybody can actually sort of like still fit in their, their schedules and so on. Um, but they, the team really took very, very seriously the feedback. I know they contacted them about the pencil and the chat to them. And, um, and the, the rebound that they've done over the weekend has been a, a mammoth effort on their part. And um, and it is is they they really can support everybody and they want everyone to be able to get through the applications and um and to have a wonderful night and really enjoy the evening to most that so obviously that's that's where that that communication with everybody all the members has been has been valuable so I just wanted to quickly acknowledge that um and I'm also going to ask um in regard to the feedback that you guys received and um, what you have led yourselves to go into that process. What um what steps now have you put in place so that people who have sort of felt actually it's a bit onerous or whatever it is that they thought um how do they move forward what those steps do you think? I've done speaking so far. <laughs> <laughs> 
Excellent. All right. So for those that have actually had a look and, and sort of got, got through that process, uh, if you want to do it the hard way, which is the way that we uh, put forward originally, which by the way looks good, and we spend an enormous amount of time, these things don't just all fall together. You're looking at somewhere about 3,500 thank you, Celeste, because you actually did the numbers for me. Because you like that. <laughs> We know because you're one of the first. What the hell is this? Get this out of my house. I want to enter the I need more full time people. Uh, was it 35 questions, 5,000 words? Yeah. That's arduous. And so the other problem, there's actually quite a number of little things that pop out. And it's not until you start that you know. So, take from us, the intent has always been to deliver a showcase awards. We did get a proper one last year, had a COVID interruption the previous two. Now's the time to deliver something amazing. And so what we could have done is said, oh, well, it's a little bit hard about like just keep going and going. And what's going to happen is you can have this many people enter, then you're going to have this many people who make it all the way through. And those that make it through actually have a, a, an advantage over those that don't finish that process. In other words, they've got additional resources. They've got a lot of this stuff ready to go. They can pull on resources like internal documents, um, websites and that to pull together everything you're possibly going to need to know. See, they're happy. They're all... <laughs> What problem? Nothing to see. Uh, no, in, in, in all seriousness, the um, and, and so to do that's probably not such a big deal for particularly a larger organization. But then when you start to look at the process through someone like a sole trader or a small business and you want to start, it gets to the point where it's like, you know, that's too hard. And it was very, very tough. When, like last week, um, I have a theory in life once is a fluke, twice is a coincidence, three is a trend, and four is a fact. And so something happens once, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've had someone ring up saying it's really hard. Yeah, but it's going to say it's hard. You don't win an award by easy, do you? Should be hard, right? However, all of a sudden, too, hmm, that's the second person. And all of a sudden, you know, you said, the, the, the dam builds up and you go, all right, we've got a problem here. And so then you start to engage. And, and as uh, Simone and I said, we reached out to a number of different people saying, how do we actually get this job done? Like, what are we going to do? And it's incredibly hard to say, you know what? We're going to stop it, flip it and relaunch it that way. The runway out is good. We don't want to have an awards which we're responsible for, and it doesn't lose with ABC for the next four years, apparently. So if we don't get it right now, we've actually, we upset the apple cart for a long, long time. That's not our goal. So we made the incredibly hard decision at two o'clock on last Thursday. So for those like specifics, I'm going to be specific. Reed's done a great job in the, here's the picture. I'm going to give you the facts. So we're going to put a pin in this, stop it. We're going to email everybody there. We're going to take the link down. And so if you wonder what's going to happen when everyone leaves here, we'll be back in there locking ourselves away to rebuild that. We've already done some engineering on that. We've consulted with some people on how do we pair it back. But it's going to be simpler. So I'm going to go from, was it 35 questions? Five, but you know, that's how you're going to say it. Well, that's, <laughs> that's right. But any point was really done. And you're a key piece of feedback, you and others. Okay. So when, when someone actually comes and says, you know, this stinks. Yeah, you, you didn't. <laughs> no, no. It's not what she said. Hang on, hang on. It's not what she said. It's what we heard. Okay. He's paraphrasing. <laughs> but, but it does go back to it. And so the other thing we didn't do, there's some of the questions which don't uh, don't foster great outcomes or don't deliver good ideas for someone who's a sole trader. So the smaller your business gets, the harder that looks. If you're a multinational, you'll just get three people and say, there you go, that's your next four weeks, let me know when we win. Which of course, those people never get to do that last bit. But it's, um, you can see the idea. So it, it's an incredibly difficult decision. In fact, as we were going through and watching it, we actually set a timeline from midday on Thursday on. By one o'clock, we make this decision. By two o'clock, we make this decision because we're working with um, a number of different people. And there's a lot of players in here. A lot of them are volunteers, remember, external people. So. You've got to be really careful because you've got um, you've got some egos and personalities and people invest an enormous amount. I mean, to write those questions took more than five thousand words. Five questions. So what you will see, and our goal is to have that relaunched as soon as possible. We're also not completely stupid in the sense that sort of when we build these things, there's lots and lots of runway. There's a, a long gap between now and the eleventh of August. If we need, we can actually bend and flex. So if we need a little bit more time here, we've got it, we've built it in. And we've actually had that built in pre Christmas because these things do come along. I didn't expect this one. So that's good. And I don't want to be spoiled. So I'm okay with that. So our mission now is to get that rebuilt, recut, and then go back to the people who have already entered and have already started that entry process to say, you're on again, go and have a look. 
and um, this is what it's going to be. But it's going to be significantly pared down. One question equals one question. That's a great start. Mm -hmm. So what sort of timelines are you, are you looking at? And you're, you're actually going to be contacting those, those people who are connected. Yeah, as we did on Thursday, to say, have these are off. We're just going to go and tinker with that, and we're just that, dial this back, da, 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 and then we'll relaunch. Um, yeah. Only for staking the ground, we've, we've had our discussion. By close of business on Thursday, um, we should have all the lights back on. If it's sooner, it's sooner. But I can promise you it's not today. <laughs> <laughs> so somewhere between tomorrow morning and Thursday evening, You'll see the lights come back on, and every single person that's entered will know the lights are come back on. We will put it back on social that it's easier. We will do every communication we've done to launch it. Will be replayed out to make sure that, that message gets out. Any questions? Yeah, I've got a question. So if I'm new into this and I haven't even looked, um, oh, fantastic. And I can see nothing to see here. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, really simple process. <laughs> yes, questions are there less words? Do you have word counts? What's yeah, all that? Yeah, so um each each right. question um itself has does have a, a a limit um to how many um words you can have in your answer. And some of the questions, the way they were written previously, there were three questions in one. There was no way to actually make sense to, to kind of reconcile what the question was asking with your word count and things like that. So where it was a really big convoluted question, we've just taken what the essence of that question was and just pulled it straight back. So I think um, one of the first questions, the essence of it was, tell us about your business. Who are you? And the question itself was like three questions in one. So that first question is now, Tell us who you are and why you're great. Like that's exactly what Exactly. <laughs> it's just kind of um I liken it to when I was at uni and uni wanted you to, you know, write a thousand words and gave you those really big convoluted uh, questions and essays and all that kind of stuff. And you you do it and you get through your degree and then you throw it all out and never look at it again. Good tip for you, Chloe, in your final year of uh, of uni. Do it while you have to, and then forget about it. Um, <laughs> so it's just kind of um, the how it was. It felt very academic. It and now we've kind of said, "Great, the theories are there. Let's actually turn it into an application that someone in business is actually going to be able to to use and understand and, and work with." Especially someone with time shortage as well, mm -hmm. which a lot of people yeah, are. And small business, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think um, the the way a lot of it was structured was very obviously coming from a more corporate point of view, um, which, as we know, we have some of those businesses here locally, but. The majority of our local businesses are that small to medium sole traders, that sort of thing. So really making sure that it's fitting our audience and who we actually know to be entering and, and think should be entering. I think so, that's a really great point. In that, um, so the, 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 the whole thing was written um, at a very high level, but the, the, the people, persons who, who wrote it actually, um, it was all voluntary, as Glenn said, um, and a lot of time and effort. Um, um, this decision to 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 pair things back certainly doesn't um, isn't saying anything about um, that work. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it what we did, were able to determine based on that feedback and from going through that ourselves was that it's as you just so rightly said it, it wasn't really speaking to our community and the businesses in our community mm -hmm. but i please don't think for a second that we, we don't value and um acknowledge and appreciate all that effort that went in previously but we just um as glenn worded it perfectly on wednesday and thursday um it just wasn't quite fit for purpose mm -hmm. um so as we do things in the business we we, we, we evolve and and we we're proactive and that's that's what we're going to do and that's all very true. Thank you. Just a couple of points on that. So more importantly than anything is one, reduce the amount of words you have to read, reduce the amount of words you have to comprehend, and take language out of it, which is um, which is great uh, if you're a, a, an accountant or if you're an actuary or if you're a, a super genius or something like that. Like I got it straight away, but uh, no, I didn't. Some of the questions I'm like, sort of, there's, there's uh, it's very cool to say about that, you know, and, and, and I'm making a piece sort of thing. It's like, it doesn't fit. So that was a really, really key piece. 
The other thing too, just so we didn't, we didn't arrive here, it wasn't a complete problem. Um, I actually was invited to go uh, and see the Telstra Awards and get a little bit of insight, um, their big, big finals for their national awards late in February. And I was actually, um, I'm thinking, gee, that's pretty cool, I got an invite. Get down and all of a sudden you start from me. Yeah, we always arrive on a table and you're the only, you don't know anyone. There's a table at tennis like who we are. Oh, I'm, you know, what it is, Charlie Smith. What do you do? Oh, I run the um, the Gippsland Region Business Awards. Okay, what a coincidence. I'm running that. Wow, that's it. So who are you? It's like, hang on a minute. So I've got Gippsland, Bendigo. And, <laughs> and so there's all these. So, well, that's Tulsa's way of saying, this is how we do it. And here's, here's, here's what a, a really well funded, well structured business award, like even down to how they delivered their gala night, which is kind of the crescendo. Like that's where it all comes together. Yeah. But you know, for us, it all starts with getting a questionnaire out there and getting businesses to engage. They didn't talk about that sort of thing. It's like, this is what it looks like at the end. So all of a sudden, you come up with a thing. Wow, this is how these guys are doing it. I mean, some of the ideas that were put forward were incredibly complicated and probably wouldn't also work in our community, and we rejected those through our steering committee. And that process has been good, and I, I will never, ever punish any of you with what those meetings look like. But um, it was a really interesting to say, if that's what the end game is, then you need to engineer this all the way back to the very beginning. And so a lot of those little things that come along and you sort of try to build those in and filter them into the process, what happens is you often lose sight of say, well, we've got the questionnaire, it's been done by someone who really knows, and the Telstra guys, theirs was very complicated, so we're sort of, we're in step with what they're doing. Yeah, no. Nah. Now, those four things I mentioned before, we're up to about number 10. So we, we don't need any more feedback. But any more feedback, we're fine, thanks. We understand it's pretty hard. <laughs> Please, no more questions on that. Um, can I want to take, oh, sorry, sorry, I have one question. So um, with the applicants, is there any feedback after the process? So if you're not successful in achieving an award, do you receive feedback as an applicant? That's a very good question. <laughs> that we will... Mm. That's through the judging process. We will mm. come back to you on that. Yeah. That'll be amazing. I, yeah. I would think it, it's a good it's incentive for some business mm. owners to. Definitely. I believe I've had some discussion around this when I have been speaking to them. This was not with you guys. Oh, sorry. Not your guys' secret. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, there was something. Yeah, that's going to come and stand up. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think we don't because now's your time to speak. No, no, no. This was this last Friday um, in the hallway. I believe there's something that they would like to do in regards to giving feedback to businesses because it will be very valuable to understand maybe what they missed out on, maybe what they didn't um, include, or maybe what they need to look at for next year, going to next year's um, business award. So there is, um, there should, there should be this week um, with our new. Me meetings in there, <laughs> lots of meetings in there, um, be a discussion around feedback, a feedback process. If we haven't established a feedback process, I'm not going to say this is how it's going to happen, but we should establish a feedback process. There is a line in there, I can tell you, there is a line there on the judges' side, but we kind of haven't got to unpack all that side of it yet. We're still finalising judges, mm -hmm. so, you know, there's, um, like, we need between 18 and 24 judges. Like so if anyone knows anyone... Time. Uh, well, we're nearly there. We're nearly there. But obviously, that needs locking down. There's got to be non disclosure agreements. It's, it's a complicated thing. It's not just a whole bunch of people sitting around and putting their hand up. It's, it's a bit more involved than that. In fact, it's very involved. So, let's... yeah. Um, well, well done, team, because I have um, a little bit of insight into what you've gone through in the restructure and the rebuild of this. The volunteers have done so much work. Yeah. And um, the essence of the awards and the questions are there. It's just the language that's you hit the nail on the head it was just trying to make sure that, that can be understood by the masses obviously you with different people that I've worked with that are going to we're encouraging you to enter so um, I really look forward to seeing sort of the revamp of it all and sharing it with them all so I got a question yeah. for everyone here what do you think is a reasonable time it should take to create an award entry <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Let's call it eight. <laughs> Don't be This is a reverse option. Yeah, I'll go on how much of that information you already have. Like that's right. Potentially, um, we may have our own quality insurance programs. Mm -hmm. We already have a lot of information. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And then maybe other people can mm -hmm. have that. So they are going to take on us. But we're sitting with that. That means that we're taking on us. It does mean, um, and this is something that um, I still remember from when we had to celebrate business launch, was how many of the previous entrants and winners said what they found so good was the process to help them really look at their business from the ground up mm -hmm. and implement um, and instigate processes and protocols and policies. That they didn't actually have previously, but they they realised they didn't have. So that that, that was something that was a real long term benefit of those applicants. See, to your point, going back to um, people working with Telstra, who by the way have been yeah, if for a name right sponsor, you couldn't ask for more. These guys are fantastic. They got money and ideas. <laughs> you got someone just half of that, which is what a very good pitch. I want money and a good idea. Um, when you enter at the Telstra Awards, they really come that has nothing to do with winning. That's just a, a byproduct that some people may or may not experience. Okay. It's about what are you going to get out of it? What do you take? It's about learning these things and then almost holding the mirror up and putting those things back in towards your business and, and, and getting those sorts of insights and growth and people engagement and all that. Depending on what category you're in, you can sort of hone in on those things. So they're really big on that. And probably we drank a little bit of that cool out as well. So we can do that. No, we don't want it. <laughs> so, and that's a hard one for us as well. But um, certainly a big part of it. even if you go to one of their, their um, finals nights at state level and they talk about people get, I'm not sure this is scripted and crafted, however, the, the, the truth still remains. They talk about what did we learn about our business through this process? The fact we're here and putting large things and cameras and stuff, that's nice. But the real goal, I mean, that, that thing's probably, you know, 150 bucks a trophy shop. The real goal was 150 grand they made because of what they thought of in the process or whatever it happened to be. Okay, so they they teach that um, very very well, and they, they and again we sort of want to pinch a bit of those ideas and start to fold that into us. But again, not fit for purpose. Um, understanding of the time and everyone obviously being small business owners, most of you in here um, have to get to work by nine o'clock. Um, yeah. Is there any other last minute questions that we can answer before we all say goodbye? I guess I just have a very quick one. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still not clear on anyone who started an award mm -hmm. um, application and where the change is going to come to play when it's start again, or will those questions be brought into the existing application? And how does that impact on what we've already done? Yeah, so you won't need to start. From scratch, um, each question is it's it's essentially what the question was trying to ask the first time around. So if you've already, um, and I'm just thinking about that first one because there's a lot of questions that we've had to yeah. take apart the last couple of weeks. But um, that first question of you know, uh, tell us about your business. If you kind of already looked at it from what it was previously, it was three different parts to it. If you've already kind of started thinking about it in that regard you should already have the makings of the answer for it once we relaunch because it's the same essence it's just it's just pulled back so will that be a, a call that populated i think is the question or will it be yeah so we're not actually changing um the we're not actually changing anyone's entry so we're just changing the questions on top of it so if you've already submitted something um your answers will still be there you can just go through and kind of revise it as as needed so we're not um starting from scratch anyway it's just editing what's already there and if you've already started your entries whatever questions you've already submitted for it will still it's saved and you can just jump back in um through the link in that you would have received um in the communications out from award force so um, just a couple of housekeeping things. Once we turn everything back on, if you've already started your um, entry, you'll get an email through a workforce to the entry platform. And if you haven't started an entry yet, I would um, encourage everyone to jump onto the um, awbusinessforest.com.au website and sign up to receive um, email notifications if you haven't already. Um, so we'll have those two different channels going out um, because the, those databases aren't linked. You might, if you've already started and you're on the subscriber list, you might receive it twice just because those databases aren't linked. Um, please don't mark me as spam because that makes me sad. Um, but yeah, just sign up for um, those email updates if you haven't already and keep an eye on social and we'll let you know when it's come to jump back in and redo it. And I just also want to take a moment to acknowledge um, our category sponsors who have been so fantastic in jumping on board and uh, supporting us in the awards this year. So we've got Visit Alta Redonga here in the room today. We've got Leading Edge Data Centers, 
here in the room today as well. I think those are only two sources. We've brought. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so lots of local support. So we thank our sponsors wholeheartedly um, for that because without their support um, to the programs, it wouldn't happen. So we always do encourage, you know, any our members and applicants to support our sponsors and local businesses where we can. So yeah, I think we'll leave it here. And if you do have any other questions, feel free to stick around or send us an email and we'll be in touch um, as we have updates. Thank you for all your patience. <laughs>